Lord bless this thing. So. Oh, this is my yeah. okay. yeah. yeah. This week, no stop. I said my hair lady talk to me with hair. Should I ever need reminding 
For the sins of the world, His blood. 
Welcome to Faith Anglican Church. This morning our worship is morning prayer from the Book of Morning Prayer. And our opening sentence of scripture is Psalm 19 verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And that is a great prayer too, isn't it? For opening hymn, please stand, is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. For those who are able, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the consolation of his Holy Spirit. Please stand. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us glory. Our canticle this morning from Psalm 95 is the Venite. Let us say this in unison. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth. 
heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Please join me in reading the psalm responsively by half verse. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Oh, that, sorry. That your way may be known on earth. Your saving power among all nations. Let your peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our next canticle, the Song of the Redeemed. We'll say this in unison. By the way, this is from Revelation chapter 15. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You may be seated. So I'm going to ask a question. What consumes you? There once was a man who was walking through his village, and he came upon a large mansion. And there's a man in front of the mansion who said, I am going to set fire to this mansion, and the fire will consume it. 
but I promised you, and he had drawn a large crowd by this time, I promise you, if you jump into the fire with me starting tomorrow, then you will all become as kings and queens. Well, a lot of people bought into it because the man was very convincing and very charismatic and they wanted these great riches and, and to, to live well. Well, the man who had been walking through the village continued walking and on the other side, there was a, a small hut and there was a man in front of it and he said, tomorrow I will set fire to this hut and if you jump in it with me, then you'll all become my slaves. Needless to say, not many people wanted to follow that guy and, and jump into his hut. Well, the guy had to leave town the next day, and as he was passing back through, something strange had happened. He first passed by the hut where the man had said that he was going to burn it down and the people would become slaves, and in its place stood a grand mansion, and everyone there was living as a king or a queen. But then he passed by the mansion, and it had turned into a hut, and everyone there had become a slave of the cruel master who had decided to burn it down. Now, how does this tie into any of our readings? I decided to, to take this sermon in maybe a different um, direction than maybe is expected. But the whole world, like these two buildings, has become consumed by fire. And not just by fire, but by the fires of war going way back to the Garden of Eden. So World War I really started in the Garden of Eden between the forces of Christ and the forces of the enemy. And whose side we chose to be on is what side would consume us. And to the ancient Jews at Christ's time, it was really easy to know, or at least they thought, to know whose side they were on. Because God's kingdom, they thought, was very physical. It was where the temple was. It was the promised land. And it was the ethnic people of Israel. And if you were outside of all of these, then you couldn't have been consumed by God and His presence. You would only be consumed by the enemy. And so it's no surprise that when Jesus and the apostles are walking through the land of Tyre and Sidon, that the apostles wanted to quickly get rid of this woman. Because not only was she a Gentile, she was a Gentile from the area of Tyre. And in Ezekiel 28, there is a prophecy that most Christian scholars um, claim is a recounting of the fall of Satan. So here is this Gentile woman who was not consumed by God, but was in the outer place, in the, the areas of the world that the enemy had conquered and had consumed and had taken over not just there, but from the very place that the enemy himself was supposedly coming from, um, allegorically. And so in Satan's reign, we see that the daughter and the mother were consumed by slavery. He is a cruel master. He comes to conquer and to take over. But Christ comes to rule with peace and love, and that is what he consumes us with. A good king helps his own people. But the good king helps even his enemies to become his people because his fire begins to consume even those who are outside of the territory, which should be rightfully his. The, the territory that we think, anyway, should be rightfully his. And so whenever the woman came to Christ and he dismissed her the way that he did, this is exactly what the apostles should have expected from the future king, the Messiah of Israel. Because he should only do what is good for his people. And the woman should have expected this also. But then what does Christ do? He kind of plays with her. He teases it out. He says, why should I give this to you? What should I do for you? And so why did he, he kind of play this game with her? Well, first it was to convince the apostles as a living parable that it's not just those who are inside God's kingdom now who are going to be consumed by him, but those who are on the outside also to convince the apostles to accept that the fire can spread and consume other people. But it was also to test the woman, to see what consumed her. Because you said we're all consumed by something on the inside. Was she going to be consumed by faith and love? Or was she just coming for some other reason? It was also to grow his kingdom. I'm sorry, I'm going to be very uh, authentic with y'all here. Um, sometimes I get consumed. And whenever I come up here to preach, sometimes I get consumed with nervousness and anxiety. And this is one of those moments, and my mind just completely went blank. Um, so I'm sorry, y'all Y'all hang with me for a moment. Oh, okay. So, 
Um, war, though, it's, it's no respecter of persons, and it always burns more than you bargained for. So this, this woman and this daughter who were consumed on the outside by the enemy, and the daughter, she was consumed by the enemy because the enemy, like I said, he has to have permission, like those people who wanted to jump into the fire of the burning mansion, but then she became his slave. And so the enemy consumes people by their own desires and then enslaves them and twists it. And so it's no respecter of persons, but God also is no respecter of persons, as Scripture says. And so we can either be a slave to God and be consumed by Him, or a slave to the enemy. Isaiah 9, 18 says that wickedness burns as a fire. It shall devour, devour the briars and thorns and kindle in the thickets of the forest. They shall mount up like rising smoke. That's what had happened to the demon-possessed girl that Christ delivered, right? Because Christ was bringing His kingdom to do war with the enemy, but she had already been consumed by the fires of wickedness. She had been possessed by the enemy. That only comes through giving the enemy permission over you and living in a lifestyle of wickedness. But Christ showed mercy even to her because of the love and the passion and the faith that consumed the mother. And so, therefore, in, in Hebrews 12, 28 through 29, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. So you have wickedness in God both as consuming fires. And so, again, this, this sermon, it, it took a different direction, but I wanted to look at it from that angle of, what is going to consume you? And I want to ask you that question, and I, I'm going to be very vulnerable here again. I get up here and I'm consumed often by anxiety and nervousness and even a little bit of fear. That's where we have to accept the grace of Christ. But I'm also going to be honest and, and open with you all in another way. Sometimes the enemy threatens to consume me with feelings of loneliness or, or a fear of rejection. But that's where I have to go to Christ and let Him come and conquer that. And so whenever we have these two kingdoms that are at war and Christ can deliver you from one of them and bring you into his by becoming his slave by which we become a king or a queen, I want you to ask yourself, what are you consumed by or what is threatening to consume you? What things of the enemy is he tempting you with? What mansions, what great treasures, what amazing tantalizing gifts is he putting before you to tempt you to being consumed into becoming his slave? consumed to being possessed by him that Christ can deliver you from. Because even if you think that maybe you're too bad, or even if you think that you're outside of his kingdom, or even if you know that you're inside of his kingdom, but that you've just messed up too much because you've been, been consumed by your own desires and your own flesh, Christ doesn't care. He wants your love and your faith, and then he will free you from it just as he did with that little girl. So, what consumes you? And think about that. Please stand for the uh, proclamation of what we believe through the words of the, uh, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Lord, we just prayed for the needy, and we do particularly pray for those who are in between jobs, out of work, those who may be suffering, uh, business owners who have lost their businesses. We just ask for your daily bread, Lord, as we pray in the Lord's Prayer for each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. The collect for today. Keep your church, O Lord, by your perpetual mercy, and because without you the frailty of our nature causes us to fall. Keep us from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable for, your, for our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A collect for times of natural disaster. Almighty God, by your word you laid the foundations of the earth, set the bounds of the sea, and still the winds and the waves. Surround us by your grace and peace and preserve us through this pandemic. By your spirit, lift up those who have fallen. Strengthen those who work to rescue or rebuild. And fill us with the hope of your new creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. A collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the third prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you in prayer this day those who we pray for regularly who are on our church prayer list. So Lord, we lift them up to you right now asking for your blessing and peace and healing for Mansell, Nancy, Bill, John, Eli, Janie Beth, Ginger, Kendall, James, Francis, Susan, Sarah, Mary, Mike, and Herb. I invite you to lift up your prayer concerns either silently or out loud. And for those of you who are at home and are watching on Facebook, feel free to write your prayer requests. Uh, that are appropriate to write publicly on the Facebook feed so we can be praying for those as well.
Lord God, we lift up all these prayers to you, and we thank you that you are faithful to hear our prayers. In Christ's name, amen. I encourage you to be seated. I just want to welcome each and every one of you here this morning. So glad that you're here, either online. About 80% of our worshipers are online. And so we're glad for you to be here, and we're glad for everyone uh, that is here in the building as well. Uh, taking a look at some of our announcements, we do have um, some of our uh, Bible study groups that are meeting through Zoom, uh, both youth and uh, adults. And we are working on our children's program with uh, Awana right now, trying to figure out exactly how we're going to be able to do that uh, this fall. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also, giving uh, can be done either through the Tithely app uh, or on, on our online uh, website or um, through checks, obviously, as well. Uh, well, today is the third Sunday of the month, so it's our uh, prayer time for birthdays and anniversaries. So whether you be at home or if you be right here this morning, um, if you have a, a birthday or an anniversary, we're going to say a prayer for you uh, right now. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these that you have brought through another year. Uh, we thank you and we pray that you would bless them throughout this coming year. Uh, that they may be a blessing to others. And Lord, for those uh, who are celebrating a wedding anniversary, we ask you in Jesus' name to pour out your grace and strength upon these husbands and wives, that they may love and respect one another, that they may be an example of what it is to be the bride of Christ and Christ, that love that you have for us, Lord. We pray that you would pour out your strength upon them, that they may live according to your will. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this Saturday is our call to the quiet. We do quarterly quiet days here at the church. And uh, usually they'll be under 10 people, so it's fairly safe as far as can be for social distancing. We'll be requiring masks and all that. But uh, So if you'd like to come for a time of contemplative prayer, uh, just a time of quiet to be with the Lord, uh, feel free to come by uh, any time between 9 and noon uh, this, this, uh, this Saturday. And you'll be able to walk the grounds, you can walk the stations at the cross, uh, or you can just be in the air-conditioned comfort of the building. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, we're basically having communion every other Sunday during this pandemic period. So next Sunday, we'll be having Holy Communion. And if you are at home and would like to receive communion but don't feel comfortable being in the building right now, you can come by during the church, uh, to the church uh, during the office hours and pick up uh, consecrated bread that you can receive during the communion service. Uh, for those of you who are here, next week we'll be receiving communion and we'll be doing what we've been doing uh, for the last month or so. You'll be coming forward and receiving the bread from a little plate on the table so that there won't be any actual touch uh, and I'll be six feet away from you. Okay. Any other announcements this morning? Do I see that hand, Jenny? I thought you were raising your hand, Jenny. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's offer up our offerings to the Lord. Let's stand. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. Of your own have we given thee. And now together we're going to pray the general thanksgiving. This is a packed prayer. This is just a great prayer. It has so much in it. If you have a chance, uh, if you don't have a prayer book, you, you can buy one today or you can look it up online. But it's just, a, it's just a great prayer. So let's pray this prayer together, the general thanksgiving. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Our opening, excuse me, our closing hymn. I guess I should say opening. You know, there's, I don't know if you know this or not, there's a controversy on, on the name of the opening hymn. It's like the, the processional. And sometimes you talk about the, the, the closing hymn being the recessional. But some people like to call it the processional because we are actually going out into the world in the name of Christ. So, our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.